New spring anime actually worth your time? Maybe. Kaguya-sama Season 3. A rom-com anime getting a third season? Must be some damn good stuff. Is there gonna be another Chika dance? No, is Kaguya actually gonna be able to confess her feelings? Although something tells me they're probably gonna milk this as much as possible and just make an anime movie. Later. And no, let's not talk about the live action. I swear, I still get nightmares for live action Chika. But seriously, I am over the moon hyped for this. You'll recall season 1 and season 2 of the anime made it into my top 10 of the year. But don't worry, I know some of you are more interested in getting another spicy OVA. I'm really just hoping we get another banger opening, perhaps even opening of the year. Post below if you're super hyped like I am. And apologies in advance for any other romance anime airing this season. You're not getting any attention. Komi-san can communicate season 2. That's right, the anime that officially killed its own meme. Going back a year to the year of the Delta, I recall just being at this Japanese subway, busting out my phone, and then just having a lovegasm at seeing the first episode. You could tell from every scene so much love and care being put into this anime. I watched the first episode three times. I think I even was in tears one of those times. I really thought, maybe this could be my anime of the year. And like someone that doesn't go outside, I binged all of it in a day. So I do want to ask, did you and I just get clickbaited by the first freaking episode? The rest of the season was kind of just as expected. Not bad, but also not amazing. Animation wise, perhaps this is why Netflix broke it into a season 2. And don't get me wrong, this is number 2 on my list, so you know I'm hyped for it. Do you want to bet Komi actually makes 100 friends this anime season? Switching it up with an actual new anime this season, Spy X Family. It's like Hunter x Hunter, the X is silent. Spy X Family. With this, you have two anime titans coming together, Wit Studio, and the now perhaps questionable Cloverworks. Um, <coughs> Wonder Egg Priority. <coughs> Promise Neverland Season 2. <coughs> Hori Mia. I'm sorry, it just must be allergies from the Sakura season right now. You got the super agent, not 007 guy, that needs a family to complete his next mission. The guy pulls an ultra super IQ move and recruits a pretend wife and little kid to play along. The secret flavor comes in when this pink haired brat actually secretly has psychic abilities. Watch out, she's like your government 5G, she's a mind reader. While the also pure wife is actually this hardcore assassin. So yes, till the end of the mission, or should I say death, do they part. I started reading the beginning of the manga and I'm like, I need to stop myself. Otherwise, I'm going to spend the next 24 hours just binging it. So 10 out of 10 hype would recommend. And it's actually funny. Move over, Konosuba. The Shield Hero Season 2. So delay after delay after delay. I'm really curious as to whether you're hyped for this. There was that whole initial controversy at the beginning that really pushed this anime to the next level to blow up. But then you got to the revenge payoff. And then going past the story, you really don't have that driving forward. So I'm really curious, are you even hyped for Shield Hero anymore? I thought I was going to be covering the Shield Hero anime season 2, so I binged almost 20 light novels for Shield Hero. And now I feel like I don't know how to read. Oof. It really made me appreciate Mushoku Tensei, Essayo Progressive, and of course, ReZero. From the latest trailers, it does look like the action and the Shield Harem will expand. Sorry, best fox girl Raftalia. And don't get me wrong, I am a little lukewarm on the light novels. But that actually makes me more interested in what they do for the anime. Especially with Shield Hero being so popular outside of Japan. What are they gonna do for the Colossal Turtle Soup chapter? And them already confirming Shield Hero Season 3, Japan arc. Which, let's be honest, is really just them splitting the season. Next up, the flavor of the season Isekai. Really, no joke when Kodokawa said they're gonna be making it rain Isekai every season. You got the skeleton knight in another world. Game world to be exact. Really, the only twist is that the guy is an overpowered skeleton knight. Oh, Ainz is gonna sue your ass. I did read a little of the manga and I could tell you that what might actually give this a little bit more flavor is it really just being a lot more bloody than other Isekai. Maybe, we'll see for the anime. And then trapped in a dating sim. Watch, if this guy's lucky, he's gonna run into Bancarino. Although really, good luck topping that anime. From the trailers, I'm really just wondering why all the random mechs? Is this knights and robots? And then Move Over Shield Hero would actually should be the best Isekai this season, the Bookworm Isekai Season 3. Oh yes, mine and a thirst for books returns. If you like Isekai, if you like an interesting character, if you like world building, watch this anime. Unfortunately, super underrated. The Demon Girl Next Door 2. So this one's fun. I mean, who doesn't love Magical Girl anime? You got Madoka, Sailor Moon, Precure. Let's not talk about a certain recent rotten egg. Take all of that and this anime then flips it. You got this Demon Girl born into what is essentially a cursed family. 
you guessed it, she doesn't turn into this super adorable pank magical girl. The hilarious part is that she's just so freaking bad at it. She's so bad at it that her actual magical girl rival is helping her to get stronger. Honestly, it's such a pleasant surprise seeing a sequel anime years later. So if you like Magical Girl anime, Demon Girls, or really just rooting for the underdog, this anime may win you over. Attack on Titan, Kabaneri, The Mage's Bride, Finland Saga, Vivi, Osama Ranking. From Wit Studio, you now have Vampire in the Garden. So forget about you photo button mapper for a second. Wit Studio over here is just quietly kicking some major ass. Just crapping out masterpieces, like no biggie. They announced this vampire anime like years back. And not gonna lie, when I actually saw the title, I was like, vampires again? Especially Japanese oni that are essentially vampires. I'm feeling like my blood hype has been sucked out. But then take a look at this gorgeous trailer. I'm just getting this Vivi vibe. Oh please, go ahead, you could bite me all you want. I don't care, I'm gonna say it, another anime of the year contender. The only real red flag here? Please Netflix, don't kill the hype like you did for JoJo. Don't drop all episodes at the same time. Yeah, shots fired. Wonder who's not gonna be invited back to Netflix again. By the way, what even is a Squid Game ripoff? And don't forget about all the fantasy anime your normie friends will think is a Sekai. I'm kidding, we both know you only hang out with hardcore weebs. Looks like the season's theme is, let's make Demon Lords great again. An obligatory Chikawa anime reference for my girlfriend, Miss Like Japan's new Hello Frickin' Kitty right now. Then for Cry Time, all the anime movies Japan is getting and you're not. But don't worry, I'm sure some of these will make it over. And is anyone else last minute binging winter anime? Oh, just me? Check out some of my favorite anime to binge here and I'll see you guys later.